Good morning guys and girls. Good morning everyone. Hi, hello, my name is EJ and I do narrated our time-lapse videos, which is what we are looking at right now. Um, so yeah, I'm back with another video for me to dissect, inspect, and you know, look at retrospectively. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about the video while it's playing. So hopefully you learn a thing or two from me dissecting and yeah, discussing this particular artwork. So again, uh, as part of my routine, I typically talk about where my inspiration comes from. And this one is um, an illustration based on a prompt from the Daily Spit Paint group in Facebook. Uh, check the group out. We're a really great group. Uh, pretty much daily prompts every day. So, you know, get your creative juices flowing and whatnot. And so yeah, uh, the prompt for that day, for this particular day, um, June 9, 2020, um, was skate park. Uh, you get four prompts from that group, of course, um, and one of the prompts was skate park. And so I did a quick Google search, uh, you know, just to get me, get some ideas flowing in my head. Um, I typically don't spend a whole lot of time doing Google searches or looking through Pixel. Um, for image inspirations, I tell you, just spend like five, you know, 10 minute stops. If it takes too long, then I know it's a waste of time, then I might as well just go with whatever is in my head at that point. Um, because nothing, no other image that I can find will just really click, you know, so. But in this particular instance, when I did a Google search, there was this really, really cool image that I saw. And basically it was a very, you know, to describe the photo real quick. Um, and real quick, oh, before I forget, um, in the last video, I talked about how in the next video, I was gonna talk about like image rights and, you know, if you can, if you're an artist, uh, if you're able to, um, try to buy, um, royalty free images or you know if the image has a, some form of royalty um license attached to it or some, whatnot uh, buy them you know just to support the artist uh, most royalty licenses aren't that expensive so anyways i was talking about an image that i bought a stock image that i bought to use for my particular um speed paint simply because the image was too recognizable and you know i wanted to respect the artist so um, and of course I talk about, you know, fair use and all that stuff and how it applies. Um, my last video talked heavily about it. It's a great subject to concern yourself about, especially if you're an artist and whatnot. Um, I'm always all about using photo references. It is so essential for an art practice for you to use images. But then of course there's also the rights of the photographer that you have to consider when you do when you use images and whatnot. So I'm always, always on the lookout for crediting photographers and making sure that, you know, I don't, you know, accidentally steal like someone's image, you know, and whatnot. Which brings me to the point that I was trying to originally make. In the last video, I said that in the next video, I show, I will show an example of a photo that I bought for use for my paintings and illustrations this is not this video <laughs> that was really what i was trying to get at it turns out that in my schedule it's actually the next video not this particular one so do watch that uh video because i will talk about um using stock images for your artwork so but yeah for this particular <laughs> illustration i did use images for inspiration However, I could not really use them as a direct reference um, slash as a photo study simply because it was the wrong angle. The image that I saw was basically um, a low shot angle of a skate park with all the ramps. It pretty much exactly like what you're seeing right now, except it's a much, much lower angle than, than what... Um, my illustration is set on. Uh, it was pretty much like ground level. And the photo was very interesting because it make it look like such an alien landscape. I mean, I've never thought of 
skate parks to be you know all that unique and interesting in terms of like photo compositions like i've never really seen like interest well yeah i take it back because <laughs> now i'm thinking of skateboarding magazines i'm like wait no there's a lot of good shots of skate park in skateboarding magazines so i totally take that statement back but uh, it's been a while since I've seen a low angle shot, like shot from a ground level. And the original inspiration I have was that particular photo. Um, the problem though was that it didn't have a person in it. It just, it looks like a landscape pho photograph is basically what it was. Um, and it pretty much is what it is. It's just a landscape photograph. No people, no nothing, just the concrete landscape. Look really interesting, look very, very alien. I was heavily inspired by it, but I just did not like the plain landscape. Um, I like people, I love people in my landscapes, you know. Um, Bob Ross was one of my original inspiration to be an artist, um, and then as well as like the Hudson River artists, uh, they're such good artists, I can't think of uh, a name right now. Uh, Bierstadt, Albert Bierstadt is a great. Hudson River artists. Anyways, my point of bringing them up is that they're such good technical artists and really awesome landscape artists, but I just could not just do, I could just not make myself just do simple landscapes. I'm sorry, I have to have people in there just because it makes things interesting. Um, and so basically, even though I was really inspired by that particular photograph that I saw, I was just like, ah, uh, no, I have to do something else. And so, this is how this girl ended up <laughs> in this illustration. This one, and I'm trying to refine her sketch. You know, I just had to have something in this particular illustration just to spice things up. And so I have this skateboarder cast really just rolling through this really cool looking skate park slash cool landscape that I've built for her, you know. Um, so yeah, really simple illustration, nothing really fancy about it composition-wise. I mean, well, composition-wise is interesting because there's a lot of negative spaces, a lot of empty spaces, and it all works together. I really like that. Very, very simple color scheme. This is a complementary color scheme, predominantly brown and uh, cyan, which honestly, I think the brown kind of makes it look ugly. I should have just gone for orange. Blue and orange always works well, but I digress. I mean, it works effectively on this one. It's not jarring like some of my color choices before. So, I mean, that's a success, obviously, right? So, yeah. But yeah, that's where my idea came from, was just from a photo that I could not use simply because, um, it was the wrong angle and it was too boring and so I kind of revised things up a little bit kind of redid the whole thing um, in my own view and again at this point this pretty much lands in fair use because even if you do see the original image um, it just will not compare I mean they will look just vastly different even though I got that inspiration from that particular image I wish I could credit the, the original photographer though for inspiration. I cannot remember who it was for the life of me. I didn't bother saving the photograph um, in my record simply because I knew that it wasn't a direct photo study slash reference. So I, I knew it wasn't going to matter as much. So yeah. But uh, now that I'm done talking about that, I guess now is a great time for me to talk about the process. And again, the process is pretty much the same for the most part. I always start out with a line sketch now. Um, always, always a good thing for me to do. I never used to because I was trying to do this whole start things out blocky and then carve my way out of the craziness. But I really do like a simple line sketch, even if it's messy, just because it outlines a lot of things for me. And then of course, after that outline sketch, I do my quick coloring scheme. Before I did this whole two-tone thing to kind of set out my lights and darks, you know, uh, you can see that there's just two basic colors in my background right now, just the cyan and the brown. 
and obviously all the browns would be where the shadow is going to go and then of course the cyan is going to be the light area um, after that I'm going to pick a few colors and slowly start adding a few more shades of hues for uh, in my background I used a random mech brush for this one with a hue variation set on it just to give me a little bit more different variation of shapes and colors and then as soon as I lay down this quick coloring unique coloring scheme I then use a smudge texture brush to blend it all down into a base paint that is what my end goal for this craziness is and this is the reason why I do this really fast because really what's important is the base paint the base paint needs to be ugly it doesn't need to be perfect because I'm gonna draw on top of the base paint anyway so I'm after the base paint as fast as I can it is a speed paint <laughs> 30 minute speed paint and so I need to get to it as quickly as possible and so I'm just laying this down as quick as I can without much thought and then I'm gonna smush them all down into that base paint and then I start my detailing process which we will see in the next few minutes
so at this point my base paint is done um you can see everything has been pretty much smudged uh into recognizable shapes and now i'm beginning the detailing process uh, the detailing process is a rinse repeat process all throughout sections of the illustration uh, what i dip typically do is i delineate my edges make my edges sharper so that my shapes read better clearer um, and it's more recognizable and then i accentuate the shadows if the shadows need accentuating and that typically just means me darkening the shadows if it just needs to be darkened and then i add highlights um, just to give my illustration that pop that little uh, cool vibe look <laughs> realistic look adding highlights just make it all the more 3d you know so but yeah i just repeat those three-step process throughout sections of the illustration obviously i'm doing this guy right now that's when i'm doing this guy um and i'm blending really the what's the word i'm looking for the gradient um typically the sky is darker slash more saturated towards the top and then it slowly desaturates and ends up in a very white glow towards the horizon so i was trying to make that whole gradient uh which is what i was basically doing and then now i'm starting with the very very background the one behind the girl uh you can see that i'm making the hills the concrete hills sharper to read um you can see that i added some cyan back because it was obfuscated by some browns the very very back um uh man that's hard for me to describe which cyan i'm talking about because there's a bunch of cyan back there but on the ground i added some cyan on the ground in the very back just to kind of indicate that there that's a ground and not like a hill basically um so i wanted to see show part of the ground farther back and then of course i'm doing um the foreground now and of course just going back back and forth with some colors that i pick just to kind of add in some gradients um then i'm sharpening the back back there so yeah it's just me just making the shapes read clearer so that the eyes can understand what exactly is going on it's now easy to tell that this is some form of concrete landscape well it will be some form of landscape whether people can tell it's concrete or not that's a totally different uh, subject matter um, painting concrete is kind of difficult Technically, I should have done grace if I really was going to go for concrete look because really concrete is more gray than cyan. But uh, what can I say? I went for a stylistic choice on this one and did cyan and browns. Honestly, I wasn't even very conscious of my color decision at that point, um, which again is what I'm trying to fix in my speed paints. I'm trying to be more color conscious instead of just randomly selecting colors and then and then working my way out of that because yeah browns is always interesting to use simply because brown even though it's part of the color wheel is technically considered um what's the word i'm looking for uh a neutral color um it's not necessarily considered a warm color or a cool color it's just a very neutral color and so I, I meant to do research on this or to at least look it up and you know ask the question why is brown considered neutral kind of like the way black is um when it's part of the color wheel so that would be like an interesting subject matter for me to read uh, eventually but not now because you know i'm narrating this time lapse um what i'm doing right now is i'm doing a marquee selection around my foreground or not my foreground but my central character so that i could isolate her from the edits that i'm about to do in the background which basically what i'm about to do is i'm gonna go over that immediate hill right behind her immediately right behind her i'm gonna work on that because that needs some work um and so i didn't want to affect my foreground character slash girl skater 
from being I, I didn't want her to be affected from my edits uh, on the hill immediately behind her so that's why I'm isolating her just to make sure that she is safe from any kind of edits and then I just realized that I needed to add one more selection don't forget did I oh yeah I think I would have remembered at this point yep there I do remember sorry I just realized that <laughs> that section right there needed to be selected as well because it's not part of her it's part of the background so I was just noticing that but yeah you will watch me continue on with my detailing in the next few minutes so just enjoy the show point I'm working on the central character which is just pretty much the last person or the last object slash part the last part of the painting that I'm that I uh, detailed and illustrated and whatnot um, so yeah this painting is almost done uh, but you can see that the process is still the same uh, me delineating my edges as you can see I'm adding some color dodge on her just so that her edges read sharper so you can see that there's some highlights that I'm adding in uh, on her pants on her body and on her skateboard um, which is what I'm doing right now um, and then after that I pretty much just add in a few lines of uh, a few lines and a few marks just to kind of indicate um, certain edges like for example her pants kind of all look like they're all like one thing so I'm just gonna add a few lines just to kind of indicate that there's two legs and not one big leg also her bra her sports bra is now officially missing so it just looks like she's naked obviously i'm about to put that back in because we can't have that obviously um so i'm gonna paint that in and then yeah this illustration is pretty much done so um as i mentioned earlier before i really like this illustration and i decided to make a lesson out of it because of its simplicity and because of the alien look of the landscape like I said when I was originally saw the photograph I thought it looked like an alien landscape and it was really really cool and I wanted to recreate it and I pretty much did on this particular illustration I pretty much captured the essence of this whole surreal atmosphere or not atmosphere surreal environment for this person to be in so it was very satisfying um, to have that uh, as part of my speed paint or to have that objective of my speed paint be accomplished so that was absolutely cool um so yeah i just absolutely love the simplicity of 
of it all. Uh, color wise, of course, I was always having issues with colors and color and I are always just gonna be at war with each other it wants to do its own thing and now I want to do my own thing I'm just joking uh, <laughs> it's I, I just really 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 need to practice some more and just experiment some more because really that's what the whole art process is you try something and then you keep keep going with it see if it goes somewhere and if it doesn't go somewhere then discard it and try something else so I'm in always in a constant state of flux in my artistic uh, practice which is the case with my colors obviously it's always a work in progress so yeah but yeah this is it this illustration is practically complete look at that that's so simple look at all those negative space i just love it there's just so much empty space and then you know that one central character just draws in the viewer's eyes straight to her it's like hey check me out i'm having a grand old time in this skate park so yeah very very simple and whatnot and of course i'm flipping the illustration back and forth just to you know check for any kind of errors that i might have missed that i could quickly edit so yeah that's it thank you guys for watching this video with me i hope you guys liked it like and subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video good night